Students have opportunities for internships and research. Learn more at salisbury.edu. Baltimore, it's where locals become insiders. Each issue of Baltimore Magazine serves as a user's guide to the region. Through our photography and writing, we point you to local food, news, culture, and more. This program is made by MPT to enrich the diverse communities throughout our state and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Coming up, the Baker Artist Awards Special. It's an all new show this year and you're about to meet dozens of artists, seriously, dozens of artists who are this year's award winners. Don't miss it, next. Welcome to this year's Baker Artist Awards special. I'm Wendell Patchett. Last year, I introduced this special by saying, quote, so much has happened this year and we're still in a season of change. Well, I'm saying it again. So much has happened this year and we're still in a season of change. COVID remains a deadly and unpredictable disruptor of daily life. Restrictions on gatherings and performances may be starting to ease, but the COVID crisis continues to be very hard on artists. In spite of it all, last year's Baker awardees have been hard at work, fueled by their grants. Let's see what they've accomplished this past award year. Art is the kind of grounding I need to be a human being. Everything that I do, all of my work, comes through the unconscious. I don't really know where it's headed when I start. When I'm doing the emotional work, I don't plan out where it's going to go. When I do the social commentary, I do work on the sketches. The George Floyd thing came along and I couldn't not do it. Many people don't recognize what it is at first, you know, because the shapes are very stylized. It's a two-part painting and the upper one is you as the officer with your knee on the neck. You know, the bottom one is down by the head, and underneath it, I've collaged the faces of all the people who I could find that were killed by police. The main thing that Baker did for me was it gave me this huge reassurance that this mattered to other people, you know, that other people were seeing the value of what I was doing, and it was part of why I had to do the George Floyd painting, because I felt like my voice was louder now. It felt like a responsibility to, to, to use that extra visibility. Receiving the Baker Artist Award, the recognition and the monetary support sparked or re-sparked the passions that I have as being an artist, enabling me to keep working. Receiving the Baker in the midst of a global pandemic was life-changing. It's philanthropy at its best for artists based in Maryland. The 2020 Baker Artist Award that I received allowed me to continue to make boundary-pushing, non-commercial narrative cinema in what was a very challenging year. Proud to be a Baker artist. Thank you for all you do to support the arts in Baltimore and beyond. Finding out that I was the recipient of the Baker was just like a shot of faith at a time when it felt like I needed it most. Receiving the Baker was so valuable to me. I had 40 performances get canceled in the pandemic, so this grant award was, you know, a godsend. One more time, congratulations to these remarkable artists. The Baker Fund, in partnership with the Greater Baltimore Cultural Alliance, has had its own creative response to the pandemic. 
Connie Imboden, president of the board of the William G. Baker Jr. Memorial Fund, is here to tell us more about this year's special mission. So first of all, I have to say a personal thank you to the Baker Artist Awards. Without them, I might not be sitting here if I hadn't come as a recipient in 2015. Well, Wendell, you are what we want to do. The purpose of the, of the awards is to shine a light on the artistic talent that we have in our community. And we do that in a couple of ways. One is through our portfolio site, which is a pretty remarkable site. Many artists choose to use that as their personal site. And the other way we do it is to give out $90,000 every year to individual artists. This year, because in a response to COVID, we decided that we would do it a little different. So we took that $90,000 and we divided it among the six disciplines and gives six artists in each discipline. Okay. So that's 36 grants, $2,500 each? That's right. That's right. And one of the things that, that we're committed to, the, the artistic community, and we're fortunate because we can, we can change direction quickly and meet the needs of the community as they change. And this last year was so, so horrendous for the arts community. So we felt it would, this would be a better response to help as many artists as we could. That's wonderful. So is that going to be the new normal going forward? No. We're going back to the original structure, which is giving $10,000 to six, six winners in our six categories. And then an additional $30,000 will be given to one of those artists. So this is significant money. Uh, but in addition to the money, there are all, all kinds of things that happen as well. Lots of press, exhibitions, um, being on MPT, and, uh, and so there's a lot of benefits to being a winner. Artists have until December 17th to sign up to this portfolio site to be eligible for all of these wonderful benefits. Well, that's great. Connie, thank you so much for all that you do to support the arts and artists here in this community. Thank you. This year's recipients were chosen from among the hundreds of portfolios posted on the Baker Artist Portfolio website. As Connie mentioned, six artists were selected from each of the six Baker genres to make a winning total of 36 artists. So hang on to your hats. What you're about to discover is three dozen artistic cameos, each 30 seconds long. Each profile strives to capture some essence of an artist's work or perspective. Artists are grouped by genre for contrast and resonance. So we begin with the writers and the literary arts genre. You will meet two poets, a novelist, a short story writer, a playwright, and an essayist. These are the final lines from the poem Monarch. That she was mine to protect had not occurred to me before I opened the box to find the right wing torn. So all that was left was her body, the other wing, and orange flecks like confetti that I shook out over my empty desk, brushed into my palm, and let fall into the trash. I was certain she was beyond repair, but now that she's gone, I see, I see her, her everywhere. everywhere. This is from Unattached. Were long relationships really like an old pair of shoes, as people said? I thought of them as more like old anti-slip shower mats, bright and clean at the beginning, but with mildew growing beneath ever since suctioning in place on day one. By the time you saw the mildew creeping up on top, the bottom was already infested beyond repair. You had to either tear out the mat and get used to slipping or keep it and get used to a lifetime of ignoring what was obviously disgusting. I find that's my, that's my work, that's my primary work, finding the right words, the exact right words. After Sister Joan becomes Pope Joan II, she has a visit from Pope Joan I. You, Pope Infallible, are number one. Exorcise the demons of autocracy. Achieve your mission with democracy. <laughs> a play is never done. Uh, a draft of it is done, and then a first version is done, and maybe even the... From a survival guide for movie monsters, Appendix 1, a compendium of human repellents. Reduced visibility. 
Humans think if they can see you, you won't eat or conquer them. Put them off their activities by conducting your actions in the following environments. Fog, rustic cabin, romantic restaurant, wormhole, stoner's bedroom, ghost ship, moors, Ikea marketplace. Sad robots, clean steel, inflexible, but where they're strong is where they're weak. Ginzu knives, not flesh. They cut themselves and fall apart. What do they want? To be waterfalls or to give new leaf? To bend, unclench, to grow a peach? The visual arts genre is one of the most sweeping categories, encompassing everything from sculpture to animation to painting. In my work, I choose to illustrate, exhibit, communicate the lived experiences, the human lived experiences of Africana peoples through pictures and images of the black body. The black body is one that has been demonized, stereotyped, stigmatized, and I wished again to illustrate a more complete narrative relative to that. My work has always been about the natural world and how we as humans relate to it. I'm specifically interested in those substances which are toxic to us and those which are beneficial. It's very important for me that people are interested in the visual effect. The primary uh, visual effect of what they see is the first level of entry. And then from there, to be able to unpack the many layers of its concept, its meaning, and its message. When people look at my work, I want them to challenge themselves, challenge um, the material they bring into a work, and think about how it connects itself to black joy, black love, black pride, black power. Are they contributing to the movement, or are they bringing something that can harm it? Performance encompasses a wide range of creative endeavors, from spoken word to dance to scrolling crankies. Take a look and you'll see what I mean. Sound to me is the most immersive element. You don't even realize what it's doing to you. That moment of perception before meaning and judgment, it's so full of potential, I just want to live there. My best work is done in collaboration with others. We build these little worlds together. My work exists at the intersection of dance, design, and film, with the genesis of my company, Orange Grove Dance stemming from a deep passion for partnering, partnering with one another, with technology, community, and partnering with the space. What keeps me coming back to my creative practice is my profound admiration for the human body. The weight, the way we hold one another, the way we see one another, the rigor, the effort, and the way we can tap into something inside ourselves we didn't know existed. Dance is a language to express yourself. I would like audience to see my artistic vision and also to feel the meaning of the work. Iconize and Sources was created based on my research combining Chinese dance and the modern dance. In terms of the design, I use four season and Chinese feng shui theory, such as water, fire, earth, to highlight the Chineseness. 
This is the Institute for Counterfeit Memory. It's a play in a box that we made during the pandemic and sent it to audience members at their homes. This is the set, which is a slide glued onto an etched jar. This is the stage lighting, which are these little tiny LEDs. The soundtrack is this little music box. And these are the diagrams that guide the audience through the process of making the play for themselves. Part of my teaching is teaching a course called Movement Enhancement Skills for Men. And I also have a workshop called Fathers, Sons, and Other Guys, which looks at how we define this word masculinity. I'm really, really interested in the moving body for males and how we come to dance. I would just say to the men that it is your birthright to move. It's only when society gives you information that you shouldn't or you can't. My advice, just do it. Boom, I am destroyed. I sank deep, deep into sad waters. Ostensibly, this pregnancy was fine. Is it a boy or a girl, they would ask? I don't know, I'd say. Oh, that's great, the old fashioned way. Just as long as it's healthy, right? And fantasy me would say, nope, <laughs> not that either. A joke about open heart surgery on a newborn. That baby you made wrong. Inter and multidisciplinary artists work freely outside the box and the triangle and the circle. They will not be pegged to one genre or medium. I'm a writer, performer, filmmaker, and speaker, and I create film installations. My work amplifies histories, intimate moments, and memories in black lives. My upcoming immersive gallery show, Uprooted, transports you into stories inspired by my life and my ancestors, representing iconic and everyday moments and memories in black lives. This project we did with the Peel was in fact one of our more important projects. It let us figure out how to resolve interest in history, art, and technology. Strikeware's project renovations uncovers the Peel Center's role as the first school for African Americans in Baltimore during the 19th century. Molly does 3D modeling, very intricate drawings. I do intricate drawings and sculpture. Jeff does virtual reality, augmented reality, and we all form together to create these action-oriented experiences through sculpture and art. My memories of the A-Rabbers were during the summertime. We lived on Bradford Street, where each door was a different color. I remember waking up to their calls. It was a funny haunting sound. Now I was just a kid, but I recognized that it brought everybody outside and they talked to them and everybody talked to each other. There was a warmth about it for certain, you know? I think I realized I was going to be an artist when I realized I wasn't like everybody else in my world. The hardest part about being a freelance adventurist is finding things I haven't done yet. My favorite part of being a freelance adventurist is finding things that I haven't done yet and pulling them off, whether I succeed or not. We are all always performing, so I do use artistic personas in my practice with Hosey as the impetus for all of my performances and artwork. I work across a variety of media where I implement elements of fabulation in my work almost as a tool to help me both remix old mythologies and to invent new ways of relating to marginalized groups of people, particularly in the United States. So here's the song that started it all. Here is Eurydice. I've been hanging on in the bottom of hell. A song and story alchemist to me is a person that is trying to bring the inner dialogue 
to the external through the delivery method of song and melody to find out if there's any connections with these other human beings on the planet. Through these tired eyes, you could hardly tell. As you'll see next, the best film and video artists create entire worlds in a very few exquisitely chosen shots. I actually came to filmmaking pretty late, um, but I discovered I have a passion for visual storytelling and I want to explore uh, poverty or working class people in America. Every single time. Give it back to me. No, Dave gave this to me. It's not yours, you just said you don't want it. I don't want to give it to you. Give it back to me and leave it to your mom. You don't belong here. <laughs> hey! So the camera system is a no? I want my films to tell the stories of the people of color and indigenous communities of Baltimore. But no one can tell our stories as effectively or as authentically as we can. It's our responsibility and our commitment to our community to do so. Staff? Steph, are you in there? I think to me, I tend to be attracted to stories not only about people who are, who are marginalized in some way, but then also resilience as well, right? They tend to find a way to kind of like rise above um, or, you know, to still kind of fulfill their dreams in the face of, of many obstacles. So for me, you know, at the center of everything is the story. My chicken ate all my bananas. I'm interested in making films that exist in between my genres, um, in between documentary, experimental, and narrative. I think the kind of space in between those is where it gets really exciting for me. Comedy, drama, suspense. I've always had a, a fascination with people and their work, why they do it, and how they feel about it. I like to approach this subject in a very kind of organic way, and I just like to let it unfold. It is no secret that Baltimore is known for its musical vibrancy and wide-ranging impact. World-class musicians play Bach at Peabody, while Baltimore club dancers have once again put the city in the international spotlight. My family, people understood this magical world of music, where using only your ears, you can go inside the experiences of other people. So for me, there was a moment at a music camp in the Berkshires. I found other kids who loved what I loved, and we played concerts in a barn, being creative in the moment and being spontaneous, and magical things did happen. And I've never looked back. The biggest musical movement in my lifetime has hip-hop and rap, you know, and when it started, a lot of people felt like it wasn't gonna last. Like the cabbage, being so factual, I'm authentic, no plastic, that's a trendsetter. Hip-hop is, is built on the young people, built on wanting to make known, make themselves known, uh, making something out of nothing. And so, you know, th these young people and this cycle continues on. We tend to think that our minds are in control, but really it's our feelings that are driving the bus, and the arts are a way that we can connect with what's under the surface. All songs are stories in a way. Usually when I'm writing lyrics, I do a lot of brainstorming and just uh, free writing. 
and then I find something that is particularly poignant from that and then try and hone a song that has a finer point to it from there. Out Calls has now been our project for about five or six years. I think the funnest part is just being in a band with my best friend. Well, we had a lot of cancellations uh, when COVID first hit, a lot of big opportunities that we were sad to see go, but we have learned how to do video, edit, record ourselves. And we also just released a music video called Love to Fight with our friend Jabari just yesterday. Without music, I think I'd, I'd be in finance. Yeah, I think I'd you? be a hitman, <laughs> most likely. Of course. Of course. When I was 14, I won my first uh, international prize. Right now, you know, after so many years of touring and performing for people, I begin to appreciate uh, the ability of expressing feelings and communicating with all different kinds of people from different cultures and all parts of the world. I think arts in general help people to connect and uh, to love each other more, to understand each other. And I think it's, it's my job, it's our job to help doing that and just to spread the love of uh, music. Congratulations to all of the recipients of this year's prizes and to all the artists of previous years. Thank you for joining us for the 2021 Baker Artists Award Special. I hope your horizons have expanded with this showcase of creative excellence and unique vision. And I hope you go out to see and support the arts. To learn more about these artists and hundreds of others in our area, please check out the Baker Artist Portfolio website. Our thanks go out to the William G. Baker Jr. Memorial Fund, which created and supports the Baker Artist Awards and Portfolio website. Also, thanks to the Greater Baltimore Cultural Alliance, which manages the Baker Artist Portfolios and Awards. The continuing commitment of these organizations is a lifeline to our community's creative future. Thank you for watching. For Maryland Public Television, I'm Wendell Patrick. raised in Mexico, then moved to the U.S. where I raised my family, and I've spent my career traveling my homeland, sharing Mexican food and culture with the world. Are you with me? I want to tell you things. Now, I'm setting my sights directly